Morning YouTube, guys, whatever you like. Um, gotta still do more planning today, and I know you guys are a little tired of the planning videos. There's nothing I can do, that's what I'm working on. I just wanted to show you, this is the roller that has the blades on that cuts the uh, wood in the planer, okay? But <clears throat> down inside here, where, where I'm pointing with the screwdriver there, when you're cutting pine, it tends to get built up there a little bit, and you got to be careful with it, or else it'll actually slow the roller down. So you have to scrape that out of there. Now it's better if you did something besides scraping it. It would probably be better if uh, we took some kind of a uh, chemical and put it in there. So I might spray a little something in there. Also, on both sides of the motor, there's brushes inside this hole and inside this hole. And every now and then, when I come out here to start this thing, I'll plug it in, turn it on, and it won't go. And when that happens, you have to take these apart to uh, clean them out a little bit. So I'm going to do that now. So this is the brush that goes in there. And it's a nice size brush. It's capable, that's for certain. And then this is the cap. But what I'm trying to show you is the sawdust that gets inside there, in here. So if it gets saw too much sawdust in there, it can't get um, enough air, enough uh, contact to make the motor go. So you have to clean that out every now and then. It's, sometimes you got to clean it out every day. It all depends on what you're cutting. This one's not too bad, but the other one's kind of bad. It's, it did start this morning, but it was running kind of sluggish. So I want to clean it up to make sure it runs good. So. This is the other brush for this side. Yeah, so that's what it is. You need to clean the brushes to make sure it's going to run good. Alright, there's a lot of ways to do things, and I'm not claiming to be the number one guy to listen to, but here's what I did. I took these caps out of here, I took the brushes out, I wiped the brushes off, and I took my leaf blower. And I put it on here and blew the stuff out, and there's vents here, you can see that blow the sawdust out of there. And every now and then you have to do that to clean it up. Now you want to make sure you're unplugged when you do these things. But uh, the other thing then is because there was a lot of pine yesterday, there's pine on this flat thing here that needs to be taken off. So I need to clean that off better too. Okay guys, I don't know if you can see in there or not. Nope, I'm not opening it right now, but that's empty in there. Uh, you're looking at, oops, sorry about that. You're looking at about 950 or so, somewhere in that neighborhood, four feet of lumber sitting there. Uh, 900 board feet of red oak would be uh, $7,200 if you bought that at Lowe's. So, I'm looking at this is probably around, I don't know, probably, oh, let's say somewhere in the neighborhood of around $6,800, $6,900, because there's some white oak, or white pine in there, and that's going to be put in my greenhouse now, so I'm getting ready to move the backhoe, and then I'm going to move that over there, and I'll be swapping that around. So, that's the pile of dust from this morning's stuff. Had a lot of interruptions this morning. I couldn't really get going right, but at least I finally finished that. It's a little after lunch right now. So I'm so happy to have that done. I just got to do one more. Okay guys, so that is cleaned up for today. Uh, this is Wednesday, I believe. Yeah. And um, what I'm going to do here now is this these boards, I could cut them and split them down the middle and probably use them for uh, tin, uh, lumber, but I'm not going to fool with that. There's too much of it to fool with and um, there's knots, there's splits, there's cracks and all kind of stuff in this. So I'm just going to get rid of this stuff. I'm going to cut it up and I'm going to uh, use it for kindling, which will actually be good for in the garage, because it's already very dry. So that means it'll start a fire easy. So I'm gonna take that and 
cut it up into 16 inch pieces, split it with an axe and get it in the garage. Well guys, I guess I'll talk to you a little bit while I split some of this wood. You know, I think one of the biggest problems in this country today and in, in families are the younger kids and it seems as though when I think about it I thought to myself I remember being in school and there were some pretty dumb kids in school and uh, you know it's not like these kids today are just plain dumber than the parents that they had or whatever but there's something different. There's something that is not the same as it was when we were kids. Or at least, when I was a kid, it didn't matter to me what my dad asked me to do. I never complained about it, and I just did it. I remember one, the, probably the worst thing I ever did was, um, you know, as far as the worst job I ever did was he had cut a bunch of trees down over the weekend and it was all kinds of brush and at the time we didn't have a chipper so uh, the brush had to be carted away boy this red oak is murder the brush had to be carted away by hand and when I did it, that night when he came home, he says to me that he changed his mind where I put it isn't where he wanted it. He wanted it moved. And he was normally not like that, but for some reason, I, I guess maybe the pile was bigger than he thought and it was too close to something. It might cause a fire or whatever. But anyway, um, that was about the worst thing I ever had to do was move that pile twice. It was a pretty big pile. But nonetheless, I did, believe me when I tell you, I did a lot of work for my dad. It wasn't like, uh, you know, 15 minutes on a Sunday and you're okay to go play ball. Well, I used to play football and my parents never gave me a ride to a game or anything like that. They figured, hey, that's something you wanted to do, you figure out how to get there. And we lived out in the country. It ain't like I had, you know, all kind of neighbors that were driving around taking you all over the place, because it wasn't like that. But yet, you know, I just accepted that as this is the way it is, and I have to figure something out. But nowadays, um, I remember when my kids were working and they didn't have uh, uh, licenses yet or better yet they had a driver's license but they didn't have a car at the time when they were you know uh, 16 years old so what happened was I would take them to work and at one point there there was four of them working at the same place what a nightmare that was because I was driving there I'd drive there, come home, only to find out I had to go back in 20 minutes to, to uh, bring the other kids, you know, uh, swap one for another or whatever. And that was not exactly a dream come true job because there was a lot of, you know, gasoline. And at the time, even though I had the kids put some gas money in, they weren't putting it all in. And that's when... That's after the 70s. You're talking sometime in the 80s or so. So, um, and the thing is, is the kids worked. That, that I don't have a problem with. And the people they worked for, you know, even told me that they were good workers. And I was happy to hear that. But for some reason, once they got to be 18, 19 years old, it just seemed to turn around and they weren't interested in, you know, what 
was happening with our family, they were only interested in themselves. Now don't get me wrong, um, I got married young and when I left home, you know, it, was, it wasn't exactly a long thought out affair. I, uh, we just got married and that was it, we were gone. But the point is, is I still would go see my parents a lot of times. Boy, there's a lot of knots in this. I'd go see my parents and, um, you know, help them do stuff and everything. I, I you know, I remember, I, I, I can't even tell you all the stuff I did for my dad, all kinds of things. And then eventually I built the house for them. But the point is, is that all he had to do, my father, was ask me to do something. And he never paid me either. If he did pay me, it was because it was somebody else's money and not his. So uh, that's the way things sort of went. But today, for some reason, and I don't really get this, even if you pay the kids, they still want all kinds of freedom. You know, with the, in this country, when you're 18, you have freedom. The problem is, the kids today, most of them aren't ready to have any freedom at 18. Now, I'm not saying everybody. I know there's kids out there who are working because I see them at the stores, and I know they have cars, and I know they're not, you know, over 18 years old. I'm not saying everybody. But what I am saying is the ones who do it, man, oh man, they act like little kids. You know, rather than doing work, it's more like I want to get away with doing work and do something else. And I just have to say, I guess the reason I'm talking about it is because it bothers me. I think that it's wrong. I don't think that kids should be like that. I think that, you know, and here's the other thing that I don't get that goes along with that is, why does one family want to take the time to build a house and build a business for themselves and when they want to give it to the kids the kids don't want it even though it paid for everything the kids have it's hard for me to imagine there's some knots and stuff in this red oak and man oh man stuff is murder to split. It's actually easier to split when it's wet, when it's dry like this. It really is tough stuff. Anyway, I got to work on that whole big pile over there. I want to get this all split so I can clean it up and get it out of the way. I'll probably have one more like this too once I get the other pile of uh, wood out of the kiln over there and get that plane which I won't do now till probably next week because uh, today's Wednesday I'm gonna have to work in the greenhouse a little bit to get things in order over there and until I do that I have my regular chore things that we do and it just seems like the day goes by so fast yeah, so anyway, I don't understand this with these kids, and I remember when I was a kid, you know, I couldn't wait to find a job. I, I, I started working when I was 12 at a Howard Johnson's, and then when I was 15, I uh, went, to went to work with my dad, and then I started working construction whenever I could and I really liked the work and it wasn't just the working I like getting paid but like I say for some reason even if they're getting paid the kids today just don't seem to get it now maybe it's me maybe I'm missing something I'm not blaming the kids I'm like I say, there were kids like that when I, when I was younger as well, and I guess there always will be. It's just, how can they be in the same family where somebody worked their whole life? 
I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, some of this stuff is unbelievable. There's knots in it. Anyway, I guess that's about it with the kids. Uh, I don't know, I guess I should say one other thing. There's, you know, I have done this more than once. I have given money towards something that the kids were supposed to do. And for some reason, after the money was given, and after the, the little business they wanted got started, they walked away. I can't understand that. And some of the things they walk away for are foolish. But it is what it is. Boy, these, this red oak is unbelievable. See, there's a knot in the back that won't let me split through it. Alright, so anyway, I'm going to get away from that for a second. Uh, what I have here now is I have two skids of wood that have to go into the kiln before winter time. Now, you know it's around 70 degrees out today. It's warmer than it was the other parts of the week. And uh, But it's just nice to do some work. I was in the shade there before. So it's not so bad. But um, I got to get this stuff done before it snows. Now. A lot of times it doesn't snow here until deer season. Deer season is the weekend after Thanksgiving. It usually snows that coming week. Usually, uh, sometimes it's rainy, and then in the second week it'll be cold enough to snow. Uh, and that's the normal way the temperatures run. But a couple of times since I've been living here twice, it snowed in October, and the snow stayed. It stayed throughout from October, November, December, all the way until spring. And um, when you get snow like that, like last year, for instance, I was unable to clean the leaves because it snowed, and the leaves were under the snow. I couldn't pick them up because everything was soaking wet. You couldn't rake nothing right. The leaf blower wouldn't work. The mower w deck wouldn't uh, pick them up. So anyway, that's why I want to get this stuff done as soon as I can. Now, if we have a normal winter, which means that October would not have snow in it, and that thing, and that uh, November would only start to get cold after Thanksgiving. I mean, I'm talking, you know, like always below 30 during the day. Then uh, that's not going to be too bad. That gives me a month or two months to actually get my work done here. So, sort of praying that it stays nice for two months and that'll help me to get caught up some of these boards are pretty nice but at one end of them there was a knotter 
something in it that was stopping me from wanting to keep keep the board. But this stuff here will definitely uh, be nice to make a fire with this in the morning. Some of it's so knotted up that I'm just going to burn it as if it was regular firewood. this story before but the worst winter we've had since I've been up here was 2009 into 2010 man that that winter was unbelievable we had 42 inches 42 inches of snow in one week and the temperatures were well below uh, freezing into the single and below uh, zero digits during those couple of months of that winter. It doesn't usually get that cold. I don't think last year, this past winter, I don't think we got below a zero too many times. Maybe a couple of times, but not many. It usually stays somewhere around zero. That's about the low, the lowest temperature, even up on the mountain here. Also, I got to do something about the kiln. Either I have to build another kiln or two, or I'm going to have to stop taking in lumber or logs because I have another project that's going to be starting probably in a this spring that has a lot of logs coming from it. I'm not sure if I want to take a whole lot more. I mean, I have another... The wood that's laying up there is probably two, two more skids of lumber. All the logs that I have right at the moment. But um, that's not too bad because I, I want to cut that little bit as I go through the winter here. If I have some nice days, I'll do some cutting of that stuff and stack it somewhere here, but I don't like leaving it sit, especially the hardwood. Now the softwood, I don't mind being outside because I can work with that even if the moisture content is 19% in it. But I can't work with the hardwood when the moisture content is that high because what I want to make won't stay together if you leave the moisture too high before you work with it, the moisture content. So it should be somewhere around eight, six, eight, somewhere in there when you're making furniture and stuff. And that's what I want to be able to do with a lot of it. I had gotten a, um, an email from a guy from up in Maine. I think his first name is Ed. He showed me what he has up there and was telling me some stuff. He sent some nice pictures of some huge snow piles that were like in front of his garage and stuff. I guess through the winters. There's a lot to keep himself busy too.
nice if when they all split like that. But they don't all split like that. Now here's one here that has some pretty straight grain in it, so this shouldn't split too bad. But I got one laying here that's got a curved grain in it. This one here, the grain comes down and curves out. So you'll see when I split it, it doesn't want to split all the way down there. It splits down to the grain and then stops. Now over here, you can see that it goes all the way to the bottom. So I can't really split that with a hatchet too easily, so I'm not going to fool with it. Listen, I've got a lot of requests about those um, little mar uh, measuring devices that I make out of aluminum. If you want one of them, there one one square is ha it goes half inch, five eighths, um, three quarters, seven eighths, and one one inch, and that's what it measures. And that works good for measuring, you know, cutting stuff up to three quarters, three quarter inch boards or less. Now, if you need something different, I can make what any size you pretty much need within reason. I'm just saying, uh, in order to get to, to buy them, they're eight dollars a piece, and the only reason they're only eight dollars is because. I didn't pay anything for the aluminum, and I'm giving you the aluminum too. The guy brought me a whole bucket of uh, aluminum pieces because I told him I could use some aluminum here and there because I want to make a foundry to be able to melt it. So, but but the flat pieces I've been using for these measuring things, and um, if you want them, Josaljo one, so it's J O S A L J O, and then capital W O N. And it's P.O. Box 94, Post Office Box 94, and that's Wellsboro, like Well, W-E-L-L-S-B-O-R-O, -E Pennsylvania, 16901. That's uh, my address. And if you send me $8 and tell me that you want one of those measuring aluminum measuring devices, um, I'll send it to you. I have a, a bunch made and I've been sending them out. I've been making a couple a day almost to be able to keep up with what people have been asking for. And really, I, I would, uh, I don't actually like working in the shop during the summer like this. I'd rather do that during the winter time. But whatever it is, it is. I mean, I understand that people need things now they don't need them you know next year necessarily so anyway if you write a check make the check out to Josaljo 1 WN and um, make it for eight dollars and right now in the, in the continental U.S., in other words, in the 48 states, that's where it's going for. Now, some people from outside the country have asked me for them, too. And I can send them, but I don't know the amount. And it's going to be more than $8 in most cases. So, you may have to uh, send my email, which is bullseyemickey at gmail.com. So, if you send me your address that's out of the 50 state or 40, 48 states then I can find out how much it'll cost and get back to you on a price. Gosh darn shipping 
since I started working on the, the parts like the um, uh, the uh, bevel siding cutter, the uh, dogs, and different things. Since I started working on them, uh, the uh, shipping has gone up twice in the past couple years. So I don't know about that either. But anyway, right now, $8 covers what I need covered. It ain't, it ain't like it's a big money maker either, but it's just something neat. Not in the middle of that one. wouldn't need much so much kindling but uh, what happens is um, I let the fire go out at night in the garage I don't try to keep it going and usually by morning it's pretty much out so I have to build a new fire and I don't mind building a fire in the morning it's just that I need to have the wood to make it now when I was in the construction business, building houses all the time, I had all the framing lumber I needed pieces to be able to start fires somewhere. Because I had a setup similar to what I have here, but bigger, when I had the lumber yard in that. And I used to build a fire in the one garage that I had there too. I know you don't see the wood pile here that was on the trailer. I moved it. I moved the trailer over to the greenhouse, but I didn't unload it yet. So that's another job that I need to do, which I'll take care of hopefully this week. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, they were saying, but it's supposed to be nice after that. So. I don't know for sure. One of my buddies that writes me pretty often from up in New York said that we were supposed to have a bad or a cold winter. He didn't say nothing about the, uh, the snow or anything, but just a cold winter. So I don't know. I had one of the kids had read that to me from the fa father's or the farmer's almanac or whatever you call it. Saying that it was supposed to be a bad winter.
back doesn't hurt, but it's sure is tight. For some reason this morning, my wife was telling me that the chickens weren't giving her any eggs. I guess they're in some kind of a mood or something. But they've been doing good all year. Sometimes when the weather changes, their habits change a little bit. Whew. these uh, logs are really something. You can cut a log. It doesn't have a knot in it. The grain looks good. You can barely see on the hardwood the middle of the tree. You know, the pith. And you think that thing will stay straight? So, you know, this piece here was from that same lighter piece I just cut. You can see how this is bent here pretty good. Now the, the grain starts up in here and runs like this and that's why it's bent there. But the weird thing is not all of them bend like that. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Wow. This is a this is white oak here. Knots goofy up. <sighs> well, there's not a whole lot more here.
oh boy, for as easy as some of this is, some of this stuff is murder. Not in the middle of that big one. Now here you can see it looks like it goes all the way down here, but there's like a shake in the knot. In other words, it comes and then shimmies back and forth. Well, on this side, there's not. So those aren't exactly the easiest ones to split with a hatchet, anyway. You can see how bent that is. This is white oak. Probably going to be hard to split. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've gotten quite a few calls about the tow board that I make and it works really good for the narrow sawmill. I don't know if it would work good for the LT15 wide but it works good for the narrower sawmill that I like I have and um, right now I have them at $460. They were $450 but the shipping on them is a little rugged. It's almost $80 in shipping somewhere between 60 and 80 depends on what kind of a box I can get them in and that price includes the shipping Oh, this one has a not clear across here, so that ain't going to split too easily either. You know, one of the things I noticed, um, just want to show you this. This is a piece of red oak. And this is a piece of red oak. The difference in them is that this is dry rotting, okay? This red oak is, you know, it's falling apart from dry rot. But what I noticed is when I cut oak, I've never had a problem cutting oak and 
having to goof up my sinuses in any way. And regular red oak that you buy at the store or that you buy from a mill doesn't do it. But when I was cutting this stuff up, this dried red oak, for some reason this stuff was getting to my sinuses. Not really bad. I mean, I didn't have to, you know, it's not like I had to take medicine, but I, it, I had to blow my nose a whole bunch of times because of that. I don't know, the dust was so fine. This one has a couple knots in it here too. Probably about three wheelbarrow loads of uh, wood here that I can use to start fires. So that'll be good. I'll take it and stack it in the garage then. It's got a big knot in it. Whew. Okay, so that's the end of that wood for today. My wife had to go shopping. Um, looks like it's around. It's going on four o'clock already. Whew. I try to quit working at 4.30 when I can or four o'clock. Okay guys, well, have a good one, I'll talk to you tomorrow, bye. Hey guys, well that there is about the, oh, I guess that's about a half of our three quarters of a wheelbarrow there, so that's almost four of them. So that's cleaned up and that'll give me some nice, uh, starter firewood to get a fire going kindling for at least a month or so so that's not bad it's around five o'clock or so and i'm just about had it for the day these are turning pretty good but not not hard yet that won't be until the second week of october a lot of them are falling though mostly off this maple tree that's behind me